Hi, fifth grade. Today we're working on problem string 22 for March number corner. If you do not have a piece of notebook paper and a writing utensil, go ahead and pause and grab that, and then press play when you're ready. Just like what we've been doing with problem strings, you'll see a problem once the blue card is flipped. If you want to solve that on your own, you need to press pause. If you want to solve it with the video, just keep watching. Let's get started. The first problem today is 3 fourths minus 2 thirds. Right. Because these are fractions with unlike denominators, they need to be changed into equivalent fractions so that they have the same denominator. One of the easiest ways to guarantee that our fractions have like denominators is to multiply by the opposite denominator. So let's just dive right in. 3 fourths, and we're going to multiply that by another fraction, and it's going to be 3 over 3, or 3 thirds. Right? The 3 came from the denominator that was opposite of it. If we multiply these out, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 3 is 12. So that will be the new fraction, 9 twelfths. And we're going to do the same thing to 2 thirds. 2 thirds, the opposite denominator was 4, so we're multiplying it by 4 fourths to get 8 twelfths. Now, you can subtract those out because they have like denominators, right? And the answer should come to 1 twelfth. Great job, let's look at our next one. 3 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 2 thirds. As always with problem strings, we want to use our previous work to help solve problems. So if we notice, these fractions are the same from above. So you have already solved for the fractional amount. The only part that we need to do that is new is 3 minus 2, which 3 minus 2, 3 minus 1 is 2. And we need to include the fraction that we found earlier, which was 1 12th. So the answer is 2 and 1 12th. Right, the next problem. 15 fourths minus 5 thirds. Okay, we are given improper fractions, which means the numerator or the top is larger than the denominator or the bottom. Whenever we have improper fractions, it's almost always best to go ahead and make that into a mixed number. So how we make an improper fraction a mixed number is you take the numerator, the top, and divide by the denominator. Okay, because all of fractions really are our division problems, just represented in a different way. So 4 will go into 15 three times, 3 times 4 is 12, subtract those to get a remainder. Okay, so how we represent that remainder is we put it over that denominator. So this new number is 3, oops, three and three fourths minus, now we're going to do the same thing to 5 thirds. You're going to take 5, which is the numerator, divided by 3, which is the denominator. 3 will go into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract those to get a remainder of 2. So our mixed number is 1 and 2 thirds. If we look, this is the same problem as above. So that is all the work you really have to do. 
rather than copy down your solution from above. Great job. Let's keep going. The next problem is four and a half plus two and one thirds plus one and one fourth. All of these denominators are different, so we need to change all of them. If we take a moment and pause, we're going to hopefully recognize that the thirds and the fourths, we did this earlier and we know we can change them into twelfths. Just kind of point that out. And 12 is an even number, so it will be a multiple of two as well. So we can make all of these fractions into twelfths. So let's just start with one half, we'll go in order. We need to think what times two is going to give you six. It's going to give you 12, which is six. So we're going to multiply this by six. Six, which is the same as one whole, to get a new fraction of six twelfths. So let's rewrite that over here. Before and six twelfths plus, okay, we're gonna do the same thing to one third. What times three will equal 12? Well, we know from earlier, four times three will equal 12. So our new fraction is four twelfths. So two, four twelfths. And one more is the one fourth. And again, we know we can multiply the fourths by three thirds. We did that earlier. And the new fraction will be three twelfths. So I rewrite that one and three twelfths. Now we can add these all together. So we're going to add our whole numbers first, and then we'll add our fractions together. So 4 plus 2 plus 1 equals 7. And I have to erase my work because I'm running out of room. Right? And then remember when adding fractions, when they have like denominators, which is what we just did, you only add the numerator or the top. So 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 3 more is 13, and our denominator stays the same. All right, so we kind of ran into an issue with this. We have 7 and 13 twelfths. So we kind of have a mixed number and an improper fraction all in one, which is not how we want to leave our answer. So we're going to go ahead and adjust this to a mixed or just a mixed number. So we don't really need to divide this one because we know 12 will go into 13 one time. So we're just going to add that one whole amount to seven to make it eight. And your remainder would have been one. So eight and one twelfth. Super uh, quick fix, but we don't want to leave our answer like that. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Four thirds plus three halves plus seven fourths. All right, we're going to do the same thing we did above and make these improper fractions into mixed numbers. We're just going to go in order looking at the four thirds. Okay. You might not necessarily have to work this out. Okay, you might recognize, well, three is definitely going to go into four one time with one left over. Okay, or you could take the time if we're not quite there yet and work it out with division. Okay, so either way we, we would arrive at one and one third. We can kind of do the same for all of these. Okay, we notice three halves is really only one. Two will only go into three one time with one left over. So we know that'll be one and a half. And then the last one, we're going to do the same thing. Four will go into seven one time. And it's a little trickier because it has three left over. Okay, we are not quite done with this one. It's got a little bit extra steps. 
So we have our mixed numbers now. So one and one third plus one and a half plus one and three fourths. And because these fractions have unlike denominators, we get to change them again. So they are the same denominators that we've been using. So thankfully we can kind of use what we've already done. And we want to make them into twelfths. So one third we know is going to be the same as four twelfths. And we got that from above. We don't really need to work that out again. I'm going to draw an arrow to that. So let's rewrite that as one and four twelfths. Let me write that a little neater. Right next is one and a half. We know a half will make go into become six twelfths. Draw an arrow to that where we did it earlier. So plus one and six twelfths. Right, and this is the one that we will have to adjust. Three fourths. We have not done this yet. So we're going to make fourths into twelfths. So three fourths times, and we know we're going to multiply it by three over three because we've done that earlier. So three times three is nine, and our denominator be twelve. It's one and nine twelfths. Now we can actually add. We're going to add those whole numbers first. So one plus one plus one is three. And we're going to add our fraction amounts, and we just have to add the numerators. So I went ahead and wrote the denominator. Four plus six is ten. Ten plus nine is nineteen. And uh oh, it did it again. So we need to fix that improper fraction right there. And thankfully it's going to be kind of quick and easy. Because we know 12 is going to go into 19 only one time. So our 3 will become a 4 because that's a whole amount. And then 19 minus 12 will be 7 twelfths. Ta -da. Whew, that one was a lot longer. Okay, one more for this problem string. The last one is two and one sixth plus one and two thirds plus three and three fourths. Okay, so looking at these numbers, they're all gonna work to become multiples of 12 because we're gonna have to change the fractions. So let's just dive right in. 1 6, we need to think what times 6 is going to equal 12. Well, we know 2. So the new fraction is 2 twelfths. So 2 and 2 twelfths. All right, plus now we need to make 2 thirds. Okay, into that. So we could multiply out two thirds times four over four, okay? Or maybe we could have recognized, well, we had one third in our problem above, so we would just have doubled that amount. But we'll do it both ways. So two times four is eight and twelfths, which four twelfths doubled would have been eight twelfths. Both would have worked. One and eight twelfths plus three and then we actually did three fourths earlier draw an arrow to it we don't even have to do that one again it's nine twelfths all right let's add them up two plus one plus three is six and then our fraction our denominator we know will stay the same 2 plus 8 is 10, plus 9 is 19. So again, we have that awkward mixed number and an improper fraction all in one, so we need to change that. And we know, like above, that 12 will go into 19 once, so we add that 1 to our 6 to make it a 7. 
is we have seven wholes, and our fraction will be seven twelfths. And again, we got that fraction from our work above. All right, thank you for hanging in there with me, fifth grade. I know this one was a little harder, but great work. All right, be sure to complete your lessons for today.